morning guys uh, my name is Kevin Cherry and I don't normally do very many videos so uh, but today I thought well what the heck I've got some vacation this week so I'm gonna try it and see how it goes <clears throat> so what I wanted to talk about today or to show you guys was an idea uh, that I got from Stephen Brown uh, on his YouTube channel and Stephen does several reviews on different fountain pens, inks, paper, pads, all all kinds of things uh, related to pens. Uh, primarily fountain pens and some calligraphy stuff. So anyway, uh, he had a video that he did called, uh, it was a, something in the title was Uberflex. And basically what it was, was a Noodler's Ahab fit with a, and I'm going to say this wrong, so please forgive me, um, it was a Bras Rose uh, nib, which is a calligraphy nib that is really thin and really flexy. So he basically fit it to his Ahab, and he got the idea from another video, which Stephen links to in his, uh, and I'll have a link to Stephen's video um, in the description of mine. So anyway, he had a, uh, it, it was, sorry, it was a really, really cool idea. Um, basically, you know, you, you've got the feed and you've got this really flexy pen. It would work uh, probably quite well for copper plate. And I am, just a qualifier, I am not a, a copper plate writer. Um, it's something that I'm kind of working on or learning some. But I'm, I'm not a person that has good handwriting skills. So... I, I like calligraphy, and uh, and I'm still not great at that either, um, but it's something I enjoy doing. So, anyways, um, he had this video showing this nib fit up to the to the Ahab. So today, what I'm going to show you is Stephen had some problems with his as well, and you're going to have some. It's not this is not the fix for all the problems, but he had a lot of issues with it running dry, uh, with it railroading, hard starts. Um, you know, and, you're, and this is by all means not the solution to all of that, but it did, in my opinion, make it a little better. So the idea is when you fit this nib to, to the Ahab feed, and the Ahab is an ebonite feed, which most of you probably already know if, you, if you've played around with the Ahabs in here, if you have one, and the ebonite is basically kind of a hard rubber, and you could, it's, it's malleable to some extent. And it's quite easy to work with. And, you know, so a big shout out to Nathan over at Noodler's Inc. Uh, I really appreciate everything that you've done uh, for the community. And, and I really enjoy your pens and, and your ink. I've, I've been trying to collect them um, because I, do, I love the story behind them. Uh, each one of the Noodler's Inc. tends to have a story behind it. Um, and, and I, I really enjoy it. So I, I'm also trying to gather up as many of the glass bottles in the three ounce size that I can to try to pour all of my ink into those uh, because I intend to collect those, those bottles. Um, and, and that's a totally another story. But one of the things that I observed whenever I was doing the, the work with the flex pen uh, was there's this when the tides spread apart you're going to basically have this area uh, where there's surface tension of the ink between those two tides and the farther apart that gets the, you know the harder that tension is stretched and so you know the importance behind keeping something from railroading uh, as soon as that tension breaks in the middle it, it's going to railroad on you and then you'll probably you'll have to you know bring the tines back together and reestablish that flow again. From this is my own observations. So, and I'm not a you know I, I'm not a fountain pen expert. I really enjoy it. Um, and this is just some of my observations um, in this brief time that I've gotten back into fountain pens. So, anyway, um, when the surface tension breaks, it's going to it's going to railroad, and so. What I went to was, uh, I thought, well, easy fix here would be I'll put the X-Feather, Noodler's Ink X-Feather into my pen, which is a thicker ink, and it's, gosh, I love it. It's amazing. It's really black. It writes really just awesome, awesome ink. 
Um, really like it and, and had to order a bottle of it from, uh, I bought mine off of Amazon because uh, uh, the Goulet Pen company was out and had been for a couple weeks. So anyways, uh, so I thought, I thought, well, I'll just put a little bit thicker ink in there and, and see how that does and it, that, that got it. Now, of course, the issue is that's whenever you're really flexing it to, which is not hard to do with this nib. It's very, very lightweight. Because uh, I had originally started off with Apache Sunset, uh, one of my favorite inks by Noodler, probably my favorite ink so far, uh, next to X Feather, depending on on, on the usage and, and the purpose. So, um, so what I did is the Ebonite feed. I'll get back to that now. Sorry, I didn't mean to to get distracted there. The Ebonite feed uh, and the nib. What will happen to you is when you fit the the bras rose, which I know I'm saying wrong, uh, nib to the ebonite, you're going to have this gap, and it's going to cause you all kinds of feed problems. So the idea is, well, I thought, well, if if you're familiar with the ebonite feeds on the Ahab, you can heat set them. So you put them in near boiling water, heat them up, and then squish the nib and the feed together, and it basically kind of reforms that uh, that ebonite to the nib and fills in any cracks and it's it's actually a great idea and, and you should do it with your Ahab in my opinion. Um, it may very well fix some little issues uh, and some larger ones as well. So the problem is the gap was huge with this with this other nib. So I thought well if I do this I mean it's uh, I'm basically going to be somewhat reforming my my ebonite feed and the noodler stuff is sometimes hard to find as well. And I, and I don't want to mess up my, my ebonite feed and have it just for this one purpose because it was really going to have to bend it quite a bit. Uh, and it probably wouldn't have worked quite well anyway. So either that or, you know, the, the nibs are about $2 a piece, uh, roughly. Uh, and, and I got mine from, uh, from Dick Bick Pins. Uh, just the first one I had stumbled onto that had it. So that's where I bought mine. And so I got some extras. I thought, well, I can just bend my nib down to, to take up this gap. And it worked. So I, I had to spread it out just a little bit and then form it back down. I think a better way to do this, uh, and, and anyway, so I did that and huge difference. Man, it, I mean, it wrote much better, which I'm going to show you in just a minute. Um, I think a better way to do it, if you take a pair of calipers and check the OD on the ebonite feed, you'll probably come up with around 247 thousandths, which is roughly just under a quarter of an inch. And the nib is not an exact fit. And so you could, in my opinion, <coughs> uh, form it better by taking the nib, and this is something to remember. I, uh, I don't mean to take another side trip on you, but I, I want to pull this up real quick and, and let you know. The problem is, um, uh, if you would want to reform this nib to fit that ebonite better, so you'd want something that's roughly about a quarter of an inch. Uh, the problem is you're going to have to heat that up and, and reform it. When you heat up steel like this, that is a spring steel, or has some spring in it anyways, if you go too far with it, you will lose your spring, and you will mess up your nib, and, and that's my guess here, okay? So, I think that if you took your, your nib and got a piece of 247 thousandths or 250 thousandths quarter inch rod, OD, check it, make sure it is, if you got a pair of calipers, if not, you can buy some for about five bucks. And take the tip of the nib and slide it into a sponge. Uh, whenever you put that into the sponge, it's going to keep the heat off of the tip. And then you can heat up the back side of it and then kind of drive it onto the, uh, onto the rod to reform it. Then it would fit your, your Noodler's Ahab feed much better. Uh, and I think that it would work quite well. Um, so anyway... I'm going to show you guys what I've got. Here's my Ahab. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. Uh, there we go. Maybe that's enough. Okay. 
so I've got my Ahab here. Um, I'm going to try to. It's going to be. That's the problem. I just got ink everywhere because I was over here messing around with it. Uh, that's another thing that you want to remember <laughs> is that you will probably, I'm going to have to move, uh, you will probably not want to carry this around in your pocket because it will leak some. And I need to refit my, my nib to my feed, but yes, I have quite the mess here now. I've got a little bit on my jeans, but these are old jeans, so no big deal. Um, so anyway, let's, uh, yeah, let's take a look at that. I'm going to try to... Yeah, you can't even hardly see it. Trust me, whenever I say there is a quite quite the gap there. Let me see if I can. Uh, and it causes your ink to drip uh, quite profusely at times. back in. My apologies. So I'm going to flip over to the other scene and there's probably going to be some blurry stuff on here so I'm going to try to cut some of that out. Um, but remember um, it will make quite the mess. I would not carry this with me all the time. I would store it pointing up where the ink doesn't run down into the nib. Um, because it will cause some issues, <laughs> as I've seen recently. Um, they're old jeans, no big deal. Uh, and it'll wipe off the couch, I think. It's a kind of a synthetic leather, so I think it'll be okay. And if not, well, it's an old couch. That's why it's in here. So, anyways, uh, things to remember. Um, store it pointing up. Uh, thicker ink seems to work better in my opinion. Um, so anyway, that's what I've got for now. And um, <laughs> I will get all the writing stuff and kind of clean up my mess and we'll get right back to, to showing you some close-ups here. Okay, so what I've got here is, is the original nib. Here, I'll see if I can get this focused in. You guys probably already know what these look like, but... Well, you silly thing. Alright, I'll just do a manual focus. Let's see if we can get this to come into view. Where's that? There it is. Okay, there we go. And this... Well, this is the factory one. Now, this is the one that I slightly modified right about there and you can see where these tines I spread them out right here kind of at the edge on either side and down here on this one sorry for the focus anyway those are spread out a bit and that's so that I could take this and bend it down okay so that's kind of what we're working with. Now, to see what it looks like, this is the Ahab feed. I'll pull this up here to where you can see it. This is the Ahab feed with the, the Bras Rose nib. See the gap right there? That's going to cause you lots of problems. You're going to have ink on your pants and your couch if you're like me. But, if you grab the one that was modified slightly, I'll slide this up here like that. And let's see what this looks like. Uh, come here, focus. Okay, it's better. 
it's not perfect and look how this thing fits I mean you can actually tell this thing fits on here much better still got a little bit of a gap there but you can kind of work that out playing around with it a little so anyways now we'll go to some writing here in just a second okay guys now I'm going to do a little bit of flex again I am not a master at the, I'm not even very good at it so um, I'm going to give it a whirl and, and nothing else you should be able to see what this thing's capable of so that that's kind of my intent anyway so uh, let's see let's see if it's going to work at first make sure that I'm in the camera view here okay so about here so tap it just a little bit to kind of get the ink to flow There we go. So we're going to do a little bit of Oops. It's one thing that I've noticed is if you pause just a little bit you're you're going to pay for it. And, and this is not consistent. Again, um, I guess, it, well, I say that. This actually wrote quite well for me uh, for quite a while. Uh, so I guess it's not reliable would be my, my thing that I would say. Um, it may be that my tines are slightly out of alignment. So I may be fighting that as well. to me again I just filled this thing too let's take a look here maybe something's going on I'm gonna go ahead and make it feed just a little bit there twisted my piston just a bit to get it that feed I did wipe everything down too so I'm probably just asking for problems because it was working and then I went messing with it ah, did it again not writing very good for me this time that's for sure and last time it was actually much better than this but again I kind of messed around with it and I probably shouldn't have uh, if it's working don't it's not broke don't fix it right so kind of the old adage there let me try I just noticed that my tines were slightly out of alignment here uh, because I had messed around with it a bit so let me see if I can get my feed uh, and everything to kind of adjust it here just a bit <sighs> one thing that I've noticed man I tell you what I really struggle sometimes trying to get the the feed and everything apart on these things um, okay now I've readjusted everything just a bit. Let's see how that does. Hopefully it works out. I'm going to go ahead and plunger just a bit. There we go. Put one little drop of ink. And I said this thing drinks ink, but that is, uh, <laughs> that is very true. And it's not because um, I sat here and, and kept twisting it. But anyways. right now what's going on here
reestablish capillary flow. Man, I tell you what, it is really bad now. Yeah, it wasn't working this bad. Um, let me try something again. Oh. Oh, by the way, I don't know if you haven't tried X Feather. You you really should give it a girl a girl a go. Sorry. It is awesome. If you're looking for a really black, you know, uh, calligraphy type ink, if you have a Pilot um, Parallel, that's uh, that's what I use in my Parallel. Um, you know, I don't I don't do a lot of colored writing um, with my calligraphy pens. Um, I'm usually just doing some some black black lettering. Um, sometimes you know, I'm studying some goth uh, goth not goth. Well, I guess it's kind of goth. I'm studying gothic right now, and that's probably you know for somebody who's not really good at it, it's probably not the best place to start. But you know that's just kind of how I'm wired. I find an interest in something I don't really care if it's difficult or not I'll just go for it because if I have to do a bunch of stuff that I don't enjoy uh, then I'm not going to do it so. okay so I may just have messed this thing up pretty bad because I cannot get this thing right uh, so, let's go come back to this, okay? Okay, well, I can't show you what I wanted to. Uh, and this should be a testimony to the temperament of this project. So, uh, one thing, I actually messed up my, my tube. Uh, bent it while I was sliding it back in. So, that was my mistake. I was in a hurry. The other thing is, I basically just messed up my nib, apparently. Uh, or it's very dirty, I'm not sure which. But, um, so I'm not going to be able to show you that. Um, my apologies. So right now I've got the vent tube, I guess I can show you. I've got the vent tube out right now. And I've got uh, a new rose nib in there. So... Uh, let's see where the camera is. Okay, I think we're good. Um, so what you can see. A little bit of railroading. Yep. Whenever you start going fast, that's when you're going to pay the price. Should have been going slower. I'm kind of riding at an off angle here too. It's one of those days so far. I don't know if you guys can see that. Probably can't. But whenever you're going in... Uh, Massive line variation. Look how thin that is. And look how thick that could be. Um, if I wasn't. And this is what that mod basically, or I say mod, slight mod, not much. I mean, there's not a lot going on there. One of the things that uh, should be noted is there's a look up the YouTube channel Ink Need Last Forever, which is uh, Nathan, uh, the owner of Noodlers Inc. I believe he's the owner anyway. I, I know that he's the owner, but it, it may be a joint partnership with him and his wife, not to take away any credit. So, anyway, check out his channel, uh, Ink Need Last Forever. I'll put a link in the description. And he talks about being able to take these Ebonite feeds 
and really, really doing some some heavy mods to these things. And that's why he made these out of ebonite. It was because of the the adaptability of the product and the older feeds, I believe, from the you know early 1900s were made out of ebonite as well. So what that lets you do is he showed on there how to take an ebonite feed that he has today like on a Conrad uh, it would be the same for like an Ahab here I believe uh, and modify it by basically cutting out the channels even wider than what they are and then really opening up the airflow on these things and what he basically showed how to do was to create an old you know early vintage 1920s you know 1900s style feed and how to make these inexpensive fountain pens uh, that are quite awesome I really really like these um, I think I paid around $22 for my Ahab um, anyway <clears throat> he, uh, he shows how to take those and how to make them um, make them right like the older style pens essentially to where you can lay down massive amounts of ink and <clears throat> and not have any issues with uh, with the with your feed like railroading or or the feed not keeping up uh, it's a kind of a kind of a pity that today uh, we've taken a turn it seems as though um, the older style pens were built much better um, it sounds like and there's some things nowadays that we do that, that I'm sure are quite superior uh, in the product but the way the feed was made the nibs um, you know my opinion they were much better I think probably back in the day the good news is um, Nathan over at Noodlers is providing a way for people to to relive um, those days and to basically take a fountain pen that is inexpensive and you know learn something about the pen. There's the X feather, um, which. I don't care for these plastic bottles, but I understand uh, why he did what he did. There's a video on that as well, but um, it's a real shame that they've taken the fountain pens of of today. And things like copper plate and everything are kind of fading away, and to me that's kind of sad. I, I really enjoy the the nostalgic properties of of those older styles so uh, the calligraphy that's why I'm studying the gothic style calligraphy which I'm going to get that book real quick so this is Mark Drogan Sorry if I pronounce it for incorrectly. Uh, and this is Medieval Style Calligraphy. Excellent book. It's about $12 on Amazon. So if it's something that interests you, go get a copy. Because it's well worth it. And I apologize for not being able to demonstrate uh, better what I was wanting to show you guys. But the idea is to... Some of the feed problems are are because the feed doesn't fit the nib and it really wasn't designed to so no big surprise it's going to require some modification to get it really set up nicely but this has the potential of being a, uh, an amazing setup if you enjoy doing this this big flex uh, style like uh, or the copper plate possibly I, you know I, I realize that some people may, people who do copper plate may say, no, you have to do that with a dip pin. But, uh, you know, that's, that's not in my area of expertise. So, 
but I think if you could grab a pen like this and not have to dip your ink frequently and you could sit there and write out a whole page of copper plate uh, or convert this to an eyedropper which is easy to do uh, again something that uh, Nathan has has thought about anyway so if you can do that you can fill this whole thing full and man just right on so uh, it, to me it's 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 a great thing so I'd like to say thank you to Nathan over at Noodlers <clears throat> for the pens and the ink and the design and the business methodology that he uses. Uh, Stephen Brown, thank you very much for your videos. Please keep them coming. I watch them very often. Uh, this Noodlers X Feather, buy it. Just buy it. It's awesome. But don't buy it all because I use it too. So anyway, thank you guys. Appreciate your time. Sorry for the long video. It wasn't as good as what I had hoped, but hopefully it portrays the point that I was trying to make. So thank you for your time and, and have a great day.